So I think um, I'm fortunate enough to be able to give the talk about this um, at the meeting, and I think it's a um, interesting and evolving um, current space in the field. Uh, right now, pembrolizumab is the only approved drug in this space based on the results of the Keynote 564 trial where pembrolizumab demonstrated a disease-free survival benefit um, over, the, over placebo. And so right now, that is the only drug that we have as an option. Um, but I think what's important is to understand in that setting are three negative trials that, although slightly different designs amongst all of them, have not shown a benefit of other checkpoint inhibitors in this space. And so I think what clinicians and patients have to try to decide and what I try try to give some perspective on in my talk is how do we how do we offer this information to patients and help them decide does it make sense to use pembrolizumab who are the best patients who are most likely to benefit and how do we sort of see that in the um, versus the other negative trials how do we sort of uh, view all of these results together So I think that's a really important part of understanding this and helping patients uh, make that decision and, and sort of guide them. Um, I talk to patients about the risk of immune adverse events, um, which occur around 10 to 15% in patients. While many of them are treatable and reversible, some of them aren't and can lead to long-term toxicities, comorbidities, and, and even death in rare cases. And so I think that's a really important part of the discussion. And I think patients have to often decide for themselves, how do I view my risk of my cancer coming back? versus the risk of getting a treatment when I may already be cured and there may be side effects that could affect me for the rest of my life. Um, I have uh, inadvertently, I think, talked patients out of adjuvant therapy on some occasions when I go through the side effects. And I think it's really about trying to present the information in a way that patients can make that decision for themselves. In regards to novel therapies for adjuvant space, the largest one I know about is in the LightSpark trial, which is looking at adding a drug called Balzutafan, targeting the HIF2 alpha pathway to pembrolizumab, and whether an additional agent in this setting will help uh, improve the potential benefit of checkpoint inhibitors. But I, I think we're still sort of in a place where we're trying to digest and understand the data that's now out there and how do we design that those next adjuvant trials carefully, possibly starting to incorporate biomarkers instead of throwing more drugs um, at these patients and trying to say, how do we really pick the patients most likely to recur and, and how do we target treatments to, to best help them? I don't think at this point there's a, a, another pathway for FDA approval right now in the adjuvant space. I think it's, uh, it's pembrolizumab alone for a while, and I think really understanding you know, how do we move forward is, is the next big step. <music>